This is the FM Gold Channel of All India Radio. In the program News Analysis, now we bring you a discussion on withdrawal of ordinance on convicted legislators. The participants are Professor Subrata Mukherjee, former faculty, Dell University, and T. R. Ramachandran, senior journalist. The Vice President of the Congress Party, Mr. Rahul Gandhi, has virtually forced the government to rethink the public criticism against the controversial ordinance pertaining to MPs and MLAs. After Rahul Gandhi had called on Prime Minister Manmohan Singh yesterday to apprise him why he believed the ordinance should be torn and thrown away, there was a meeting of the core committee of the Congress and thereafter the meeting of the cabinet was held in the evening seeking withdrawal of the ordinance which had been sent to the president for his assent. At the same time, around 1 p.m. in the afternoon yesterday, the Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, called on President Pranam Mukherjee and apprised him that the government has decided to withdraw the ordinance. The ordinance comes in the wake of the Supreme Court order of July 10, which struck down Section 8.4 of the Representation of People Act, saying MPs, MLAs will be immediately disqualified if convicted by a court in a criminal offence. The ordinance was meant to overturn this decision of the Supreme Court. The Cabinet also decided to withdraw the bill pending in Parliament on the same issue. The Representation of the People Act and validation of the bill 2013 will be withdrawn by Union Law Minister Mr. Kapil Sibyl in the winter session of Parliament next month. Mr. Sibyl has already moved the proposal for withdrawal of the bill which was referred to the related Parliamentary Standing Committee on Law last week. To give a time capsule or timeline of what has really happened since July 10, July 10 the Supreme Court strikes down the Section 8.4 of the Representation of People Act saying MPs, MLAs will be immediately disqualified if convicted by a court in a criminal offence. August 28, 29, 2013, government talks to BJP seeks support for proposed bill to undo the effect of the Supreme Court order. UPA ministers claim BJP is on board. August 30, law minister couple simple introducing representation of people amendment and validation bill 2013 in parliament. BJP forces government to refer it to the standing committee. September 24th, cabinet clears an ordinance to protect convicted MPs and MLAs from immediate disqualification. September 25th, BJP and left criticize Congress on ordinance and say that the government is doing it to protect allies like RJD chief Lalu Prasad who has since been convicted and today he has been jailed for five years rigorous imprisonment along with a fine of rupees 25 lakh. September 26, which is very significant, BJP leaders L.K. Adwani, Sushma Swaraj, Arun Jaitley meet President Pranam Mukherjee and ask him not to sign the ordinance. September 26, the day later, President summons Home Minister Sushil Kumar Shinde, Law Minister Kapil Sibyl to seek clarification on the ordinance. September 27, Mr. Rahul Gandhi terms the ordinance as a complete nonsense when he meets the press at the Press Club of India where the chief spokesperson of the Congress party, Mr. Ajay Makan, was holding a press conference. And on September 27, PM Manmohan Singh says on his return from New York that Rahul had written to him on the ordinance issue and says he will discuss it with the cabinet. In the overall, how do you really see these events as it is unprecedented in India's democratic history that a single individual of a party virtually sets the tone on whether a certain ordinance should be there or not, essentially because of public displeasure against it? Well, if you really look to the way you have narrated the entire incident, one stage is followed by another and then it is leading towards the culmination. Now, if you really look to the entire episode, the first is the Supreme Court verdict, which by itself is a revolutionary one, because what the Supreme Court did was to bring parity between an ordinary citizen and a member of parliament, because if you really look to that the electoral rights get nullified of an ordinary citizen, but it is continues 
to be immune to the members of the legislatures and the parliament as long as the appeal procedure continues. Now this anomaly was taken note of and then the court intervened. Now the first point that we should realize is that the situation arisen because of the long delays that normally takes place in the Indian judicial system because if you really look to even Mr. Lalu Prashad Yadav's case it has taken about two decades to come to a final position, though it is not even final, because there are any number of appeal procedures in our judicial system. So there is a larger controversy about it, that right to appeal, if it is there, should it be exercised or it should not be exercised? And then there is a larger question, a moral one versus a legal one. But looking to the Indian situation, I think the Supreme Court took a decision which is practical that since it takes longer time, now some kind of deterrence must be there to create a situation where people will think twice before really deviating from the normal procedure and doing something which is immoral and unethical. Professor Mukherjee, have we really reached that situation where public accountability has now come to stay? You yourself mentioned that the courts and judiciary take an extremely long time. It seems on the hearing on October 10th, the center is likely to tell the court that it might be advisable to have special courts for speedy trial of such cases against very influential people and politicians in particular, as well as others, so that a decision is given as early as possible. So that would be a welcome move. But again, the question that there is, that if you really look to the intentions and the way people reacted at a particular time. I think to be fair to the Prime Minister, time and again has reminded us about the coalition compulsions. There were two significant meetings before the ordinance was really sent to the President. One, the core group of the Congress party met, endorsed it. Subsequently, the cabinet with the PM in the chair met and endorsed it. Same process was undergone after Mr. Rahul Gandhi felt this was not a right thing to come forward with and therefore this should be withdrawn. Well, if you really look to the Prime Minister's intention on this is clear that he was trying to build a larger consensus because the kind of thing that the Prime Minister was trying to do is that there would be some punishment. If you really look to the ordinance, there are two clauses which I think are very important. One is that the voting right of the person will cease. And second thing, there will be no salary for the period that he would be serving and the case to be decided. So again, what the Prime Minister attempted was some kind of a face-saving device and looking to the compulsions of coalition politics to find a midway. But then what happened, as it happens in politics, that a week becomes much more important than months and there the opposition forces, as you mentioned, that some of the leaders met the President and the President also sent it back for a reconsideration in a way. That's again, is a very important point and we should really look to that important point when we come to Mr. Rahul Gandhi's assertion. I think once the ball was again sent back and the President's opinion in a nutshell was a reconsideration, I think the party galvanized itself. So, in a way, I think a large section of congressmen themselves feel relieved now that this could have further harmed the Congress party in the run-up to the elections, first to the assemblies and subsequently the general elections in 2014. Do you think this will in some way help the Congress pull back a bit of its prestige? Well, you see, there are two questions involved in it. First is, there is a question of constitutional procedure, that once you have taken a decision, Undoing is quite a difficult process, but again, constitutionally, that has been achieved. Now, whether an individual is instrumental in bringing the change or otherwise, since it has been done within the constitutional procedure itself, I think the constitutional supremacy has been re-established. Again, the question arises that one individual action really leads to the entire change in the entire process. Here I think what happens is, you see, we should always remember one important fact, that issues become political at a particular time and place. And here today in the context of India, 
Corruption has become a very important issue and what people used to think to be inevitable say a hundred years ago, now they find it intolerable. And in that kind of a situation, I think Mr. Rahul Gandhi has really caught up the issue at the right time and delivered it in the context of the popular mood that something should be done immediately and there must not be any indefinite postponement. In that way, I think not only has galvanized the cadre of the party, but again he has also brought a new message to the country itself that itself may be a turning point for the entire political system as it works in India. Professor Mukherjee, till Mr. Rahul Gandhi came out with this statement against the ordinance and he was very categorical, didn't make any bones about it and then said that lock, stock and barrel it should go. Do you think the all-pervasive power or the utterances of such a person as the vice president of the Congress party subsequently really becomes the policy for the Congress party? The purpose of the Manmohan government, both in the first innings and the second one, is to build a consensus. Because one thing we should always realize that in a country like ours with major contradictions and unless and until we have an enduring consensus, nothing will really deliver. So ultimately you have to create a situation where people will endorse what you do. So that I think one quite achievement of the Prime Minister that slowly he has started to build that kind of credible kind of an alternative and changes by who is the India can become an important player in the world. So it has taken much more time than many people think, but looking to the Indian situation, I think it was essential. But again, here I'd like to credit the Prime Minister. Once he has taken those bold decisions in economic reforms, there is absolutely no going back, either for the present administration or any future one. I think very significantly the Prime Minister, even though he seemed and appeared hurt after the remark of Mr. Rahul Gandhi, has ruled out resigning as the Prime Minister. That many have had demanded that he should resign under the circumstances. But do you think his resignation at this juncture would have been disastrous for the Congress Party and the UP as a whole? Well, I always remember what the Mahatma said, beauty of compromise. You see, he reminded any number of times that in a very difficult situation, you will have to look to history rather than temporary gain or loss. I think what the Prime Minister has done, he has shown his sagacity. He has accepted very gracefully, though the mechanism could have been different, it could have been articulated much before, and a different process could have been followed. But the fact remains that the issue that the Vice President took up was an important one, and the mood of the country was for its endorsement, and then the Prime Minister quietly accepted, understanding that what the people want and what is good for the country. In that way, I think he behaved more like a statesman and just not like a politician, and there he will get full marks. The Cabinet's message of withdrawing the ordinance, the controversial ordinance, do you think is a stern message to politicians that they will not retain privileges if convicted? It comes in the wake of the conviction of former Union Minister Lalu Prasad Yadav and Rajya Sabha MP Rashid Masood. Absolutely true. As it is said, zero tolerance. That spirit has arrived and I think there will be no stopping. We will find a much cleaner process of the electoral process, the parliamentary process. Debates will also reach a much higher stage. So I think what was necessary has been achieved now. Thank you very much, Professor Mukherjee. You were listening to a discussion on withdrawal of ordinance on convicted legislators. The participants were Professor Subrata Mukherjee, former faculty, Delhi University, and T.R. Ramachandran, senior journalist. It came to you in the program News Analysis, produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. This program is also available on the website newsonair.nic.in. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsttalks at gmail.com. 